Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. Uh, if you just watched the previous video, we, we just talked about this independent assortment. Again, this is the idea that genes will not affect how other genes are expressed. And we talked about this and how it applies when we're thinking about, instead of usually just look, looking at one trait at once using a monohybrid cross, we're now gonna start to look at two traits at once using a dihybrid cross. And at the very end, I mentioned that while the distribution process of this is very similar to a monohybrid cross, coming up with what's supposed to come on the outside of our, mono, our dihybrid cross is going to be a little bit more tricky. So we're going to dive into that today to try to look at how do we come up with these letters on the outside. And to consider this, we're going to start off by talking about this idea of gamete formation. And we've talked about gametes a little bit earlier in this unit. So when we think about gametes, these are going to be our sex cells, such as sperm and egg cells. And if we remember, gametes are different from normal human body cells because they contain half the normal amount of DNA compared to a normal body cell. Um, and when we are making these, we want to keep two things in mind. First, each gamete will contain one allele for each gene being considered. Remember, we're starting to think about dihybrid crosses where we think about two genes instead of one. So what I mean by this is that there should be one of each letter inside of a gamete. So for example, we're going to consider this genotype of big H, little h, big S, little s. When we're thinking about the gametes that could be made when we're considering these two genes at once, we need to make sure that our gametes contain one H, either a big H or a little, little h, and they contain one S, a big S or little s. And we're going to talk about the different combinations that we can make between these H's and these S's. The second thing we're going to think about, we're actually going to take a concept from math. Um, I'm hoping that we've learned about FOIL before. And I know that you may have used this when we're thinking about quadratics, but we're going to apply this um, to genotypes, and it's going to be a helpful tool. If we don't remember, FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. And we're going to use this to know what gametes can be made when we are creating and when we consider a genotype. So there's this really nice animation that's going to help to show us in motion how we can come up with different combination of our, um, our alleles to make gametes. So the F in FOIL stands for first. So we are going to consider these as a pair. We're going to take the first letter in each pair. So in that case, this is a big H and a big S. When we put those together, we are going to make this first gamete down here of a big H, big S. Our second step is thinking about the outside letters. So we consider this as a whole group now, and we take the two letters on the outside, a big H and a little s. Those two get put together, and we come up with a big H, little, a, little s as a gamete. Our next one is the inside letters. So again, we consider the whole group. We take our two inside letters. This is going to be little h, big S. This is going to be our third possible gamete that shows up down here. And then lastly, our, our last thing to do is look at the last letters of each pairing. So that is going to be our, our two on at the end of our pairs, our little h and our little s. Those combine to make our final gamete here, little h. So this FOIL method is going to be something that we're going to talk about and apply in just a second. Um, but it's going to be a helpful tool for us in order to evaluate a genotype and to determine the possible gametes that can be created with that genotype. So what we're going to talk about first, we're going to consider an example with pea plants. We're going to look at two traits, the trait for seed color and the trait for seed shape. So I'm going to put up some information below about how these alleles are going to be considered. So when we consider two genes, we do need to use two different letters. So for seed color, we're going to have two alleles. The first one is going to be big G, and that stands for green. It's a green allele. We're also going to have little g, which is going to be our yellow allele. And then for our second trait, seed, seed shape, rather, we're going to use R's. So big R is going to be a round seed shape. And then little r is going to be a wrinkled seed shape. So these are going to be the four alleles that I want you to write down. We're going to use these. So in our example, one of our parents is going to be homozygous dominant for seed color and heterozygous for seed shape. So that's our first parent. 
Our second parent is going to be heterozygous for seed color and homozygous recessive for seed shape. So you do want to make sure that you're keeping track of what type of genotype applies to which trait, um, but we're going to break these down in just a sec. So first, what I want you to consider um, is what is the genotype of parent one? So again, parent one being homozygous dominant for seed color and heterozygous for seed shape. Go ahead and pause the video right now and figure out what you think the genotype for parent one should be. Again, seed color is going to use these G letters and seed shape is going to use these R letters. So your answer should be four letters. Go ahead and pause this and think about your answer. So hopefully you just took a second to consider that. When we break this down, when we consider a heterozygous or rather a homozygous dominant genotype, we're going to use this for seed color. So homozygous dominance, we have two copies of the dominant allele, meaning that we have two big Gs. So we should have big G, big G. And then we are heterozygous for the seed shape trait. So then we should have one dominant allele and one recessive allele in a heterozygous genotype. So when we combine those together, that should give us a genotype for parent one being big G, big G, big R, little r. So that should be our genotype for parent one. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing for geno the same thing for parent two. So considering their genotype, again, parent two is going to be heterozygous for seed color and homozygous recessive for seed shape. So go ahead, pause the video, and try to come up with the genotype for parent two. All right, so when we break down parent two, they're going to be heterozygous for seed color. So again, we're working with our G's here with, for seed color. So when we're heterozygous, we have one copy of the dominant allele and one copy of the recessive allele, so big G, little g. And then we are homozygous recessive for seed shape. And that's going to be our R's. So for homozygous recessive, we're actually going to have two copies of our recessive allele, so little r, little r. When we combine that together, we should get Big G, little g, little r, little r. Hopefully we got those two genotypes of our parents. Now we're going to take these genotypes and actually start to make some gametes. So these are the genotypes that we just came up with, with for our parents. Parent 1 being big G, big G, big r, little r. And parent 2 being big G, little g, little r, little r. So now what I'm going to ask us to do is to figure out the gametes that parent 1 can make. And to do this, we're going to think back to the FOIL method that we talked about two slides ago. So go ahead, think about that FOIL method, and try to figure out the possible gametes that parent one can make. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, so hopefully we just took a second, applied this FOIL method to our parent one genotype. So again, what we're going to do, the first step in FOIL is first, so that is going to consider the first two letters of each pairing. So our first possible gamete should be big G, big R. We're then going to do the O step of FOIL, so the outside letters. So that is going to be big G, little r. That is our second gamete. The third step of FOIL is our inside letters. So in our whole group, our inside letters are big G, big R. So that is our third gamete. And then the final step of FOIL is last. So the, the two... The two last letters of each pairing so it's going to be big g little r so that should give us our four possible gametes as being big g big r big g little r big g big r and big g little r what you should have hopefully noticed is that there are some repeats and these are helpful for us when we're actually thinking about probability so when we think about the gametes that parent one can make half of the time parent one is going to make a big g big r gamete and then the other half of the time, they're going to make a big G, little r gamete. This probability idea is going to be really important when we're thinking about plugging our information into dihybrid Punnett squares. Um, so keep this idea of probability in mind for later. I'm now going to ask you to do the same thing for parent 2. So again, parent 2's genotype is big G, little g, little r, little r. So now, based on that genotype, what gametes can parent 2 make? Go ahead and use the FOIL method, pause the video, and try to figure it out for yourself. So if we apply the FOIL method to parent 2, we're again going to start with the first letters in our pairing. So big G, little r is our first gamete possible. 
We're then going to do the outside letters. So all the way on the edges, we have big G, little r is our second gamete possibility. We then have our two inside letters. That's going to be little g, little r. And then our last letter in each pairing, which is going to be little g, little r. We write all of those outs. Our gamete should be big G, little r, big G, little r, little g, r, little g, little r, little g, little r. And again, we notice a very similar thing in parent two. This again kind of gives us some probabilities here. So half the time, parent two is going to make these big G, little r gametes, and half the time they're going to make these little g, little r. So this is where we're going to stop for now. But in our next video, we're going to think about how we can take these gametes that we just made and plug them in to a dihybrid Punnett square to basically predict the offspring that our two parents can make. So that's what we'll be talking about next time.